Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Accessibility Review Series where we take a look at different elements, blocks and widgets across different page builders. I'll try to point out areas where I think the devs are doing well as well as areas where I think they need room for improvement. Today's video will be focusing on accessible tabs within different Gutenberg blocks. Specifically, we'll be focusing on six different blocks which are Generate Blocks, Green Shift, Grade, Cadence, Spectra, and Stackable Blocks. And we'll be testing each of them for accessibility. So this video will be timestamped. If you want to just jump to the specific builder that you use, just go through the timestamp and go directly to your builder. But first, let me tell you the scope of the test. We'll be focusing on the HTML and the interactions. So that is the keyboard interaction, the mouse interaction, and screen reader interaction. We'll not be focusing on things that are visual. So things like color contrast or anything visual, we're not going to be focusing on that because I believe that is more for the designer to do rather than the plugin developer. So let's go ahead and now look at what I feel an accessible tab should look like before we go ahead to start testing all the different tabs. So before we continue, let me just point out that I didn't do any styling because like I said, I was not focusing on the style. What I'm focusing on is the HTML and the keyboard interactions. So now let's jump right into the builder. So here we have a simple tabbed interface that I created using green shift elements, dynamic shortcodes, and WP code box. We'll be doing two main tests, which are checking the HTML structure and the interactions. So that is the mouse interaction, the keyboard interaction, and screen reader interaction. In a previous video, I showed how I believe an accessible tab should look like. I'll leave a link to it in the description. So today's video, we'll just be doing the test. But before we go into the test, let me go ahead and just show you how the structure should look like. So this is how the HTML structure should look like. We should have the tab list with a list of tabs, and then we should have the tab panel afterwards. Think of it like your table of contents. So you, in your table of contents, you have a list of links. Each of those links takes you to a different section on the page. So in this case, we have a list of tabs, and each of those tabs triggers a tab panel to either show or hide. So when we have the home tab active, and selected, then the tab panel becomes active and visible, but the other tab panels are hidden from view. Then we have three main structures we can use. We can use either the div with a row equal to tab list, the buttons with a row equal to tab, and then afterward, we have a div with a row equal to tab panel. Alternatively, we can use the UL LI structure. So we have a UL with a row equal to tab list, LI with a row equal to tab, and your tab panels afterwards. Then for the progressively enhanced version, that is trying to take into account when JavaScript is disabled, then we have the ULLIA structure so that when JavaScript is disabled, then it turns into a standard table of contents. So we have the UL with the role equal to tab list, but because we cannot have any kind of semantic elements in between the tab list and the tab, and we know that the tab should be the element that is doing the triggering or the interaction. So we make the LI to have a row equal to presentation. Then we transfer the row equal to tab onto the A tag, and then all the other information goes onto the A tag. The LI just looks like one thing that is there, but it's not actually doing anything because it has a row equal to presentation. Because it has this row equal to presentation, at the end of the day, it turns back into the same structure which I'll just show you now with an example from the APG guide. But first, let's go ahead and even look at the main one we're using here. So I'll right click, inspect it, and I'll go ahead. In this example, I'm using the progressively enhanced version. So we have the UL, LI, and then the A structure. But watch what happens at the end of the day. When I activate the accessibility tree, if you don't have this stickman button at the top right of your screen, then you can just go ahead to the far left, you'll be able to see the accessibility tab. If you can't see it, then if you click on the more options, then you'll be able to see the accessibility tab option to select. Now let me go to the accessibility tab. 
all I had to do was just enable full page accessibility tree. When I enabled that and I reloaded the dev tools, then I could get access to this stick man. So when I click on it, it now takes me to the accessibility tree. This is what is exposed to screen readers. So that is what is being read out by a screen reader. So we have our wrapper div that doesn't have any role. So that is actually ignored, it's just generic. But then within it, we have two things, the tab list and the tab panel. Within the tab list, all we have are tabs. We don't have any other semantic kind of HTML within it. It's just tab lists and tabs. And then outside of the tab list, then we have our tab panel. So that is what is the key bit here. And you can see each of them has a name because it's always good to have a name. So it's either the visible text becomes the name or an area label or an area labeled by, but there should be a kind of name so that when a screen reader user is doing the navigation, he can understand that this tab list or the tab itself is different from the other tab. If everything has the same name, then it's hard to distinguish them. It is important to always have names. As you can see, I also named the tab list itself using an area labeled by which is connected to the title. Talking about the title, did you notice that all of this information here is dynamic? I use dynamic shortcodes for this. Everything is using the data from the YouTube API. So we have our title, the image, the ID, the number of subscribers, the number of videos, everything is pulled in dynamically from the YouTube API, which comes from my YouTube channel. I'll do a video later showing how I was able to accomplish it. So you can check out for that video. It should come out sometime. So everything here, including the description, everything was gotten directly from the YouTube API. So it will always constantly remain active and updated. I don't have to come back and try to change these values. All of these values will be updated every day. So yeah, moving on. So as you can see, we have the name, role, and value. So the name of the tab list is the DevDen Web Dev. Then each of the tabs have the names, which are the visible text. They also have some things here. So see, selected is false. We're using area selected, not area expanded. It's only in accordance that we have that area expanded because something is dropping down. But for tabs, they're just selecting a tab item and then something is becoming visible. So that's why we're using selected. We're not using area expanded. So now let's go ahead and check out the keyboard interactions. The three things you need to note here are first, when focus is outside of the tab list, it should go to the active tab list item. Then when you press the tab key again from that tab list item, it should go to the tab panel one way or the other. So either you make the first element to be focusable within the tab panel, or you make the entire tab panel focusable. In this case, I just made the first element here focusable. If there's no focusable element as the first, or at least around the first step, then just make the tab panel focusable using tab index of zero. And to be fair, you cannot predict in the page builder world whether your designer will make the first link to be focusable. So I would advise the plugin devs to just make the entire tab panel to be focusable. If you don't understand what I mean, so here are two examples from the APG guide. The first example shows that the first element there is focusable. So when you go from the tab list, if I press the tab key, it goes into the tab panel, the first element being focusable. That's how all of the elements here, they have the first element focusable. But if you check the second example where they don't have a focusable item within the tab panel, watch what happens when I press the tab key, it focuses on the entire tab panel. So that's what you need to do. So that's the first thing. Then the next thing is that when the tab panel is currently selected, then we should use the left and right arrow keys for the horizontal tab panel to move between the tab list items, as you can see. I'm moving using the left and right arrow keys. While the top and bottom arrow keys should do nothing, those things should do their normal purpose for whatever they were made to do. Don't add any event listener for the up and down arrow keys, only the left and right arrow keys within a horizontal tab. And as a bonus, you can add this loop so that when it gets to the last item, it should loop back to the first item. So it's a loop or 
when you go to the first item, if I press the back key, it should go back to the last item and have that loop when I'm pressing the left and right arrow keys. Whereas the tab key should focus on the tab panel if there is no first focusable element. But if there is a first focusable element, then ideally it should just be that first focusable element so that it doesn't have to start reading the entire tab panel to the screen reader user. But because there is no other option, then we have to just make the entire tab panel focusable. So that's it for the keyboard interactions. For the screen reader interaction, in this case, I will not go deep into it. I might test for one or two of them, but once you can look at that accessibility tree and see how it looks like, then that will give you an idea of what is going to be announced to a screen reader. So now let's go ahead and start with our testing. So we we'll start with the first one, which is grade. First up, we have the grade tabs, which comes from the grade suit. Shout out to Anne Mike Bolivar for working tirelessly with the grade team to make their components as accessible as possible. So I have a good feeling about this one, but we'll go ahead and we'll check it out now. So let me go ahead and check the HTML structure first. So I'll right click, now choose inspect. And as you can see, we have the standard version. So we have a div with a role equal to tab list. Then we have a button with the role equal to tab. Then underneath we have another div with the divs with the role equal to tab panel. So it looks like it's correct. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the accessibility tree. So I'll click on the stickman. And as you can see, we have the tab list, which has tabs as the direct children. And then we have the tab panel. Only one tab panel is active at a time or visible at a time. Then each of the tabs, they all have accessible names, even the tab panel. So the tab panel that is active now is the playlist tab panel. And as you can see, the tab is the playlist tab has the selected equal to true. Every other one has selected equal to false. And notice that they're not using area expanded here. It's only area selected. So that is correct. Then everything is focusable. So that means they have either a tab index of zero or a tab index of minus one. So everything looks correct. Now let's go ahead and do the mouse test, then the keyboard test, and then a screen reader test. So let me close this up. We we'll start with the mouse test. And everything looks like they are working. The element inside can be clicked. So everything looks fine. Now we'll do the keyboard test. For the keyboard test, let me go ahead and tab through the focusable elements just before the tab list. So what we expect is that once it leaves the last focusable element, it should go to the active tab list item. So in this case, you should go to the playlist tab, not the first element. It could be the first element if that is the active tab list item. So let me press tab. And as you can see, ignore the visual. It is on the playlist tab. That's where the focus is. Then when I press the tab key again, it should go to the first focusable element within the tab panel. So let me press the tab key. And that is it. Now let's go ahead and check if there is no focusable element. Will it still focus on the tab panel? So I'll go to the videos tab. Then let me press the tab key and see if it will focus within the tab panel. So I press the tab key. And there we have our first problem. Ideally, it should focus on the tab panel. But as you can see now, if there is no link within the tab panel, a screen reader user will have no way to access that tab panel. So that could cause a problem. So that's it for the tabbing. Now let's go ahead and check with the arrow keys if we are able to move between the tab list items. Because there are two versions, there's the automatic activation and the manual activation. So it all depends on which one you're using. Automatic activation just means that when I use the arrow keys to move between the tab list items, it should also automatically activate the tab panel that is selected. Whereas the manual one requires that you press either the space bar or the enter key to activate the tab panel. So let's see which one they are using here. So I'll press the shift tab to go back into the tab list. Now let me press the left and right arrow keys and see if they work. So left, it works. Right, it works. And they are using the automatic activation. So optionally, let's see if 
when it gets to the end, it loops back to the first item. That is just an added bonus. It's not like a requirement. So let's see. Okay, that one doesn't have it. So it doesn't loop. But at least the left and right arrow keys are working. Now let's try with the up and down arrow keys. They should not have any event listener. So up and down. So that is all good and fine. So the only thing that I will say that is missing from this is that when there is no focusable element, it is not focusing on the tab panel. So that is what is missing here. So they should have a tab index of zero on all of the tab panels because you cannot guarantee that users will have the first elements within the tab panel to be focusable. So that's about it. And optionally, they can add that option so that when I go to the last item, it should loop back to the first item. There are also some other optional things that you can add where if I press the home key, it should go to the first item and the, the end key should go to the last item within the tab list. But those are all optional. They are not compulsory. So yeah, those are the only two things that I think that they can add to improve this tab. I will not be doing the screen reader test because I can see from the accessibility tree that it looks okay. So I give this one a pass, just two minor improvements. And so that's it for the grid tabs. The next tab interface we'll be looking at is the generated blocks tabs, and it is only available in the pro version. Shout out to Brendan O'Connell for setting up the staging site for me to use for this test. So now let's go ahead and do the HTML test before we go into the interactions. So now I'll go ahead and right click and I'll choose inspect. And let's see what the HTML structure looks like. So we can see they're using the div and buttons. So we have a div with a row equal to tab list. Then we have another div with a row equal to list before we have the buttons with the row equal to tab. So there is a problem here already. Like I already mentioned, it should just be tab list and then the tabs as the direct children of the tab list. Then we should have the tab panel away from it. But in this case, it seems that they are using the tab list on the entire tab interface, which is not correct. The tab interface itself should have a div, but just a generic div. It should not be having any role. It is this one that they put as the role equal to list should have the role equal to tab list. As the name implies, it is a list of tabs. So that's tab list. So that's why it has the role equal to tab list should be on that div that wraps the tabs. Then each of the tabs or the buttons within them should have the role equal to tab. So that's the first problem here. Now let's go ahead and take a deeper look using the accessibility tree. So let me click on the accessibility tree. And we can see, like I said, the problem already. The tab list is not the entire wrapper. It's only for the list of tabs. This list should not be there. It should be replaced with tab list. And then the tab list should be replaced with the generic div. But otherwise, every other thing looks okay. So we have focusable. That means I'm believing that all of them have either a tab index of zero or minus one. We'll check it out when we are using the keyboard interaction. Then the selected. Only the first one is selected and that is true. Okay. And then the others are having false. Okay. So let me now go ahead and do the keyboard test. So let's close this up and we'll do the keyboard test. So for the keyboard test, let me go ahead and just focus on the first element there. So let's get going. So right now, I believe once press the tab key again, it should now go to the home tab or let me make it to the playlist to be sure it's working. So if I press the tab key, our second problem, it is still focusing on the home tab rather than focusing on the playlist tab. So what I believe is happening here is that everything just has a tab index of zero rather than having all the other non-active elements having tab index of minus one, only the active elements should have a tab index of zero. So that's the first problem. So then the second problem, let me see if now my hunch is right. So if I press the tab key again, so yes, that is the problem. So literally all the buttons are having a tab index of zero rather than minus one. So that's why all the elements, you can tab through all the elements, which is wrong. They are using the manual activation. So let's see if the space bar and the enter key 
actually activates all of these elements. So spacebar, okay, it activates. Enter, activates. But now here comes the problem. How do I now access the tab panel? Because they're using manual activation, I'll have to press the tab key to get to this link because there is a link within that tab panel. I have to press the tab key, go through every link on the tab list first before I get into the tab panel, which is tedious. We are trying to help out our screen reader users and our keyboard users so they can get quick access to whatever they are tabbing through. Because just like have with your table of contents, when a user clicks on the table of content, it should direct his focus into where the heading is rather than staying on the table of content. So it's the same procedure here. We want to have a quick access from the tabs to the tab panel. So yeah, the problem here, let me go ahead and inspect it again to be sure of my hunch. Inspect. So you see each of the buttons, they should have a tab index of minus one. But there is no tab index here, so that's why it's causing this problem. Next, let's try out with the arrow keys and see if the arrow keys are working. So left, right, the arrow keys are also not working. So that means this was just created to be like a tab, but it is working as just a list of buttons. So it's not really a tab. So I believe they need to fix a lot of things here. The first thing they need to fix is that they need to move the tab list role to the right element. Then the next thing they need to do is make sure that all of the buttons that are not active should have a tab index of minus one. Only the active button should have a tab index of zero. Next, we should be able to use the left and right arrow keys. So when we press the left and right arrow keys, it should move our focus from one tab list item to the next tab list item. So that's from one tab to the next tab. Then we can decide if we're going to use the manual activation or the automatic activation. It all depends on you and depends on the kind of content you have. But then when we now press the tab key from our active tab item, it should go and focus on the tab panel. So there should be a tab index of zero on the tab panel. So those are the three things that need to be fixed. Move the tab list to the right item. Make the tabs to have a tab index of minus one accept the active tab element, then make sure the tab panel is also focusable with the tab index of zero, and that should be it. So that's it for the generate blocks. We'll go ahead and check out the next one. The next tab interface we'll be looking at is the Greenshift tabs. So I want to say shout out to Lex who has been creating lots of content for Greenshift and to Igor who has been creating lots of amazing features. So now let's start with the HTML structure. I'll go ahead and I'll right click. So let me make sure this is the active one. Right click, inspect it, and see what's going on. Okay. So this is not even a tab interface. This is, I don't know what to call it because there's no role equal to tab interface. It's a role equal to button. So these are just a list of buttons that triggers an interface. Well, let's take a closer look. I'll open the accessibility tree. And let me locate the element. So all we have are just buttons and then we have some elements beneath it that are activated by the buttons. So we already have lots of problems here. So first, this ignored, or which is just a div, should have a role equal to tab list. The tab panel should have a role equal to tab panel. Each of these buttons should not actually have a role equal to button. They should have a role equal to tab. So all of them have a role equal to tab. Then yeah, they should be focusable and it shouldn't even be using expanded. Expanded is for when something is expanding. This is just showing up or hiding. So it should be using the area selected because you're selecting a list item and then it is triggering the display of an element somewhere else. So that should be area selected, not area expanded. So that's the problem here. So all of this Expanded, area expanded should be removed and replaced with area selected. And then it's only the active element should have that selected equal to true. So all he has to do here, let's go over it once again. First, this wrapper div should have a role equal to tab list. Each of the buttons should have a role equal to tab. The area expanded 
should be replaced with area selected, then the paragraphs or each of the divs at the bottom should have a role equal to tab panel. That will now make it into a tabbed interface. Before we now go into the keyboard interactions, given what we already see with the HTML, we already know that the keyboard interactions will probably not work as expected, but let's go ahead and check it out. I'll close this. Then let me press the tab key. So from the last item, this is the active element, which is videos. Let's see if it focuses on that videos. Tab key, it focuses on the first element because there's no tab index of minus one on all the other non-active tab elements. That's why it's still focusing on the home. Let's press the tab key. So it's just going like standard focusable elements, which is not what we want here. So let me press with the arrow keys and see if it works. No. The arrow keys are not working. So ideally, with the tabbed interface, the left and right arrow keys should move within the tab list items, whereas the tab key should move focus either away from the tab list or into the tab panel. So that's what you should be doing. So that's a problem here. So the green shift needs a lot of work. Everything will be in the comments, what work needs to be done. So that's it for green shift tabs. They have a lot of work to do. This is considered not to be a tab. These are just list of buttons that triggers something to work. So let's move to the next element. The next tab interface we'll be looking at is the one from Cadence. Shout out to Eddie Verda who recommends Cadence. So now let's go ahead and see how it looks like first with the HTML. Let me right click, let me access this, right click, inspect it and see what kind of structure they're using. So they're using UL, LI, A structure. So the progressively enhanced version. The UL has a role equal to tab list, correct. The LI has the role equal to presentation, okay. And then the A tag has the role equal to tab. So excellent. Now let's see beneath it. So we have a wrapper div and then we have divs. Let's see if they have the role equal to tab panel. So everything looks in order. Now let me go ahead and check out the accessibility tree. Let's see. Okay. So we have our tab list and we have our tab panel. So all looks okay. I'm not sure what's going on here. Maybe it's just my system. Okay. So we have tab list. We have tabs. They all look okay. And then we have our tab panel and it's only the active tab panel that is showing up, which is the playlist tab panel. Okay. That's good. Now let's see if they are focusable. So they are focusable. That means they have a tab index of either minus one or zero, or they're just naturally focusable because they are a tags. Then let's see they're using area selected. So good. And then only the active element has the selected equal to true. So which is perfect. So yeah, I think this is looking very good so far. Now let's go ahead and do the interactions. Let me close this. Let me click on all of them. They seem to be working. Now I'll go ahead and try to navigate into them. So I'll press the tab key. Let's see if it will focus on the playlist. So tab. Yes, it focuses on the playlist. So that's good. If I press the tab key again now, let me see if to focus on the playlist section, which is a link within the tab panel. Tab. Okay, it's focused on that link. Now let's try again with the second example, which is the videos tab. Let me do the same thing. So now I'm on the videos. Let's see if I press the tab key to focus on the tab panel. If I press the tab key. So that's another limitation here. So a screen reader user will have a hard time accessing that tab panel because there is no focusable element within the tab panel. and Remember that our tab key is being handled for something else and the arrow keys are handled for something different. So because those two keys are already taken up, there is no other key that the screen reader user will be able to use to access the tab panel. Unless maybe the screen reader user knows that maybe there's a heading within the tab panel, then he can probably use the headings or something else to try to access that tab panel. But any other thing will fail because there is no direct relationship. So that's the problem. So that's the only limitation I'm seeing here for now, but let's try with the arrow keys now. 
So I'll start from the beginning. Press the tab key. I'm on the videos tab. Let's press the left and right arrow keys. So left, it goes to home. Right, it also works. Now let's see if they loop. So I'll press the right arrow key again. And yeah, it's looping. So that's perfect. Now let me press the up and down arrow keys. It is recommended not to have any kind of event listener. So let me press up and down. So yeah, everything is perfect. So I think the only limiting factor here is that when there is no link within the tab panel, it's not focusing on the entire tab panel. So that's the only thing that I think Cadence may need to, to add. But overall, I think they are one of the best so far. But let me now try with the home and end keys and see if they added that as well. So end and home. Okay, that's just added. So that's not really important. But yeah, every other thing works. So thumbs up. That's great. So this is the best so far. Let's go ahead and check out other ones. The next tab the interface we'll be looking at is the one from Spectra. So let's go ahead and check it out. I'll right click to check the HTML structure, inspect, and let's see. So okay, it's using the UL li a structure. So we have the UL with a role equal to tab list, the li with a role equal to none. You can either use none or presentation. And then we have our a tag, which has the role equal to tab. So that is correct. So they're using the progressively enhanced version. So now let's go ahead and check out the tab panels. So this is the tab panels. Let's see, do they have the role equal to tab panel? I don't see any role, so I guess that's the problem. Let's go ahead and check it out with the accessibility tree to be very sure. Click on the accessibility tree. Let's see. So we have our tab list. They have tabs as their direct children, but there is no tab panel, so that's a problem here. The containers should have a role equal to tab panel, but it's missing here. But at least the other ones are there. So the first problem that they need to fix is that each of the containers within the tab panel should have a role equal to tab panel. They seem to have given it the area controls, area labeled by, but they just forgot to add the role equal to tab panel. That is relatively easy to fix. But they are also using selected, which is correct. They have the names for each of the elements, which is correct. And then all of them are focusable. So the only thing they need to change within the HTML structure for now is that each of the tab panels should have a role equal to tab panel, and then it should have a tab index of zero so that it makes it focusable, just to ensure that the screen reader user can have access into the tab panel. Let me close the HTML structure. Now let's go ahead and check out the keyboard interaction. Starting with the mouse interaction, it's working. But now let's go ahead and do the keyboard interaction. Click on the tab, 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 tab. If I press the tab key now, it should go and focus on the playlist. So let me press tab key. There's a problem here again. So that means they are not using tab index of minus one on this element. Let me press the tab key again. So that's it. So that's the second problem. There is no tab index of minus one on each of the non-active tab list items or the tabs. Then let's check out the next problem. If it can work with the arrow keys. So let me press the left, right. So the arrow keys are also not working. So that's another fail. So because it's supposed to work with the arrow keys to move between the tab list items. So from home to videos to playlist, you use the arrow keys. But from the home tab to the home tab panel, you use the tab key. That's how it should work. So let me right click and inspect again. So yeah, I was right. All of the tabs, they don't have that tab index of minus one. So that's where it's causing the problem. They should all have the tab index of minus one. Only the active tab should have, in this case, the playlist should have a tab index of zero or it can have no tab index because it is an A tag. So it will be naturally focusable. So yeah, that's the problem. So I'm moving on, we'll go to the last tab and see how the stackable blocks fares. The last tab the interface we'll be looking at today is the one from stackable. So now let me go ahead and check out the HTML structure first, then we'll do the interactions. So I'll right click, go ahead and inspect it. 
Then let's see what they're using. So they seem to be using div with the role equal to tab list, then buttons with the role equal to tab. Okay. So now let me go ahead and check out the other one. So we have the tab. Doesn't seem to be having the role equal to tab panel, but let me confirm. I'll click on the accessibility tree. Then I'll go down and see. Okay, I just missed it. Yeah, the tab panel is there. So we have the tab list with tabs, and then we have the tab panel, okay? So the tab, they all have the accessible name, which is the visible text, okay? They're all focusable, and they have the area selected, which is good, and only the active element has the selected equal to true, which is correct. The tab panel also has an accessible name, which is good and it is focusable so yeah this is looking very good so now let's go ahead and check it out using the interactions so i'll start with the mouse interactions that looks okay now let's go ahead and do the keyboard interaction so start from the beginning tab 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 now if i press the tab key it should go to the playlists tab so yep i'm on the playlist so that is they have the tab index of minus one on all the other non-active elements only the active element has the tab index of zero okay so if i press the tab key again it should go into the tab panel either the first focusable element or on the entire tab panel let's press tab key yeah okay so now i have access to the tab panel if i press the tab key again and i'll get access into the link within the tab panel so yeah this is looking perfect now let's go back and see if we can use the arrow keys to navigate between the tabs in the tab list so left is working right is working okay let me move the mouse away now if i get to the last item let's see if it has that bonus of looping around so it's also looping around so that's good the back is looping around if i press the up it should not okay so then that's where the the mistake is so they are also listening for the up and down arrow keys which technically we should not be doing we should allow the up and down arrow keys to do their natural functions only the left and right arrow keys within the horizontal tab should have that event listener so it listens for left and right arrow keys but don't listen for up and down arrow keys so i think that's the only drawback that they have here with the stackable blocks it was almost the best but it also has just that one limitation which is just a minor thing they can easily remove so all i'll say is for the stackable blocks, all they need to do is remove the event listener for the up and down arrow keys. I think every other thing there looks to be working just fine. And yeah, that's it. And yeah, we've successfully tested out six different blocks. And I'll say my top picks for now are stackable, cadence, and grade. And my bottom picks are generate blocks, spectra, and especially green shift. Greenshift didn't even try to make any attempt to look like a tab. It's just a set of buttons that triggers some divs somewhere to either show or hide. Whereas with the others, they at least tried to put some elements but in the wrong order. Like the generate blocks, they put the tab list on the wrong elements. And Spectra, they forgot to put the role equal to tab panel on the tab panel. The other ones, they did relatively well. Just some minor things that are not failures but they create some limitations so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you did please do leave a like thumbs up then write in the comments that you liked it if you have any other kind of builder that you would like me to test out please do leave it in the comment section and i'll go ahead and try to test it out so until next time keep building accessible websites bye <music>